guys, it's Rich with another Tarot Talk video. In this video, I am reviewing the Lord of the Rings Tarot deck and card game. This is produced by US Games. It's developed by Terry Donaldson, and the artwork is by Peter Prokowinik. I am sorry for mispronouncing your name if you're watching this. Um, and it, it is also a game and the game rules or the game itself is produced by or done by Mike Fitzgerald. So a nice little pack of not only tarot cards but also a game, so fun. Um, regular US game box, nothing to write home about. You know, I am a sucker for a good package, but you know what? My tarot doesn't live in a box, so that's fine. My oracle decks, however, do live in a box, so if this was an oracle, then I'd be a little upset, but it's a tarot deck, so not upset about that. Uh, the reason I'm doing the Lord of the Rings tarot is because I also have the Hobbit tarot. If you did not watch last week's video, I review the Hobbit tarot. In that, I discuss that Yes, I am a Lord of the Rings fan, and I read The Hobbit back in high school, and am currently, at the time of recording this, going through The Lord of the Rings on Audible. So if you guys would like to do the same, you can go ahead and click in the bottom bar. There's a link where you will be taken to audibletrial.com backslash Christopaganism. You will receive a free credit for any book that you want. Um, I think they do it on all books. Uh, if I'm mistaken on there, I'm sorry. But it can be used for a book that is the audible version of that book. And you get to keep it whether you keep the subscription or not. If you don't like it, you know, tell them, hey, I want my free credit back, and they will give it to you. Um, and that's, I think, all that I have to say about that. So, yes, I am listening to Lord of the Rings on Audible at the time of recording this, so I am on a little bit of a Lord of the Rings kick. So a little bit about the Little White Book is it is in fact a Little White Book. Um, a good portion of this is actually used to describe the game, and um, yeah, it seems like a fun game. It seems like that if I had a couple friends over that were into uh, the tarot and into Lord of the Rings, sorry about that, the cat hit the... Uh, the tripod. Um, if I had people over and they were into tarot and Lord of the Rings, I would definitely play this game. It gives the Celtic cross spread, which is pretty common in a little white book, and um, gives about 25 pages, roughly 25 pages worth of, actually less than that, I'm sorry. It gives about 15 pages worth of descriptions for the, <laughs> I'm sorry, the cat just like went face first into the cabinet. Anyway, it gives a little tiny blurb for each individual card. It doesn't go into great depth. It does give reversals. Um, a little white book in and of itself. Nothing to write home about. Nothing fantastic. The biggest portion of this uh, little white book is mostly the rules of the game. And... It looks like explaining a little bit about Tolkien and um, the books that he has written his works. So nothing fantastic about this little white book, so uh, I can take it or leave it. It's really no big deal to me on, on this little white book. But as you guys know, if you've watched my other reviews, I do like a really good companion book to go with the tarot decks that I get. So. Let me go ahead and flip you guys around or down or whatever you want to call it and we will go through this deck and compare it with the Rider Waite Smith, the traditional. So let me go ahead and flip you guys around and I will meet you there. Okay so here I have an up close of the box, like I said, little flip top box, nothing to write home about, nothing special. So I'll set that aside. Um, the little white book, again little tiny things here and there, little blurbs. Most of it is actually uh, dealing with the rules of the game itself. So from like page 28 on until the rest of the book, it's basically rules of the game. 
So, again, nothing really to write home about on that one. You do get uh, this little advertisement card, which is, you know, just basically like a title card. I'm going to use this as the comparison on the size here. And they are the same size as the Rider Waite Smith, also by US Games. So, that is your comparison for how big it is, or the size of it. The actual size of the deck is about the same um, in thickness as the Rider Waite Smith. Um, so, that gives you a good comparison on that. This is another card that you will receive with this deck and it's basically the rules of the game so they spend a lot of time on the game aspect of this but uh that's not why i get tarot and most people that's not the reason that they buy tarot decks so kind of a uh, little bit disappointed that they spent so much time on the game aspect of it rather than um with the actual tarot cards themselves and the meanings. So here we have the decks uh, in comparison to one another. I do want to say that you can go borderless with this deck. Um, just be careful if you cut on this side. I would, if I went uh, borderless on my decks, I would cut on the outside along the white because it's just easier. It gives you a better um, way of cutting the decks to be borderless. I don't like how they made the picture smaller and put all of this brickwork on this side. I would have rather them to have put the full, like the description of the card up here um, along the top along with the number or have it down here at the very bottom or something like that to rethink the, the layout of the overall card to make the picture a little bit bigger. However, I do like that they included this little blurb down here about uh, what part of the book it corresponds with. I do like that. This little symbol up here has to do with the game itself. Um, I will say that I don't like how they made Gollum this greenish figure. I'm not really that pleased with that. But overall, the pictures are fairly nicely done and you can't really compare this really to the traditional tarot quote unquote traditional tarot of the Rider Waite Smith as much as you can other decks because it's it's derived from a book uh, a lot of it you can glean from the book and put into a deck but there are, there are aspects of the book that, you know, you can't necessarily, they don't necessarily coincide. Uh, I think I'm uh, explaining that correctly. And there's Tom Bombadil. Hmm. I do like how they picked some of the symbology of uh, the subject matter for the, the cards. Like the Wheel of Fortune is the ring. The ring brings benefits, but eventually dominates one ring to rule them all. I think that's very fitting. A lot of the uh, aspects of the tarot can be found in Lord of the Rings. There's a lot of different aspects that you can find in Lord of the Rings in all kinds of different mythologies or in allegory and whatnot. And if I remember correctly, Tolkien actually did not like that people compared his writings to an allegory because that's not how he wrote them. But so many people do that and you know what, that's just the way it is. And you know, that's, it is what it is. So anyway. I do like the way that they correlated the meanings of the cards with different aspects of the books is basically what I was getting at or getting to with my little ramblings there. 
I will say that it doesn't go in order of the books. I would actually like to see a Lord of the Rings Oracle. I think that would be fascinating if they did an Oracle deck of Lord of the Rings where it kind of told the story of Lord of the Rings, maybe even do three decks of Lord of the Rings and have each one be a separate book. I think that would be fascinating. I would love to see that. Um, and if there is one out there, I'm going to have to actually search for it. I am not the biggest fan of the artwork. I think this artwork is is lovely, don't get me wrong, but it's it's kind of like it was pulled out of a book. Uh, it is beautiful artwork, and I don't want anybody to, to think otherwise of that, but it's not like a... Uh, it's not a fantastic artistic piece that uh, was meant to wow and you know fascinate people such as um, let's see what's a good example like the witch's tarot the um, I think that one has some fascinating Im imagery to it um, Hmm. Now my mind's going blank. Or the tarot Illuminati. Like the, you know, tarot like those are more about the artisticness and uh, comparing them to the Rider Waite Smith. Whereas these ones were meant to kind of stand on their own and uh, be a tarot and be a game but also to be in line with the books. So even though they don't follow the book, you know, step for step, you know. I think you guys understand where I'm going with this. So, yeah, I, I'm actually kind of loving this. Um, just with the little blurbs down here, going through the books and now listening uh, to the books on Audible, I'm understanding more and more about the land of Middle-earth. I'm also a huge fan of the movies. So about once a year, I watch all three Lord of the Rings movies back to back. And I have them on an extended version. Trust me, that is one long day. I don't have all of the Hobbit movies, and I really want to get them, but I have not gotten all of those. I have not seen all of those, so that is just something for in the future as of right now, but eventually that will be a reality, and it'll basically be a, um, a long weekend of sitting there and just... Um, in encapsulating my life in Middle Earth, I guess is the best way to say it. But basically just sinking into that Middle Earth aspect and just loving it every step of the way. I absolutely love watching Lord of the Rings every year. Um, I usually only get to it about once a year or so. I also do that with the Hannibal series. I, I usually watch... Uh, the Hannibal series once a year all the way through all of them including Hannibal Rising um, I usually watch all of those in order so yeah I, I'm the same way with that and as I'm going through here I'm reading some of the uh, some of the little tidbits that they have down here. It says Bilbo finds treasures in Smog's lair, but later will come but later will come a time for a division of the spoils. Okay, this is one of the cards that I was uh, talking about um, in the Hobbit tarot that this one would be one that would actually go in the Hobbit tarot, not in the Lord of the Rings tar tarot. So some of this actually goes back to The Hobbit, and some of this stays in Lord of the Rings. Um, and I think some of the Hobbit tarot does that as well on the flip side. It goes into Lord of the Rings instead of 
uh, staying in the Hobbit exclusively. So there are some aspects like that, but you know what? I can deal with that. Oh, and one of my favorites, Treebeard, the King of Coins. Uh, that's another thing. They do coins instead of pentacles in this one as well. Um, it says Treebeard, the ancient spirit of the earth. I love that aspect. I really, really do. So, actually, I need to take a picture of this and send it to somebody. So, yes, that is the Lord of the Rings Tarot. You can pick this up for about 10, 11 bucks ish. Uh, not including shipping. Um, yeah. So, Lord of the Rings Tarot. If you are a Tolkien fan, I do suggest it just for a collector's type of item. I do suggest it if you want to read the little tiny tidbits down here. Um, I think they're fun. It's more of a novelty deck than it is a reading deck. But you know what? If I have somebody that is a Lord of the Rings fan and I connect with them enough, I will definitely read from this and we will have fun and talk Middle Earth and talk uh, uh, tarot. So, yeah. I think it's a fun game. I It's not necessarily a reading deck for everybody but if you're a lord of the rings fan you know what i think you'll enjoy this so overall i i would i would uh suggest it to people but like i said the only thing i don't like is all this stuff going on over here all of the extra little tidbits that they put in uh and the fact that they oversell the game in, not only in like an extra card, but taking up most of the little white book. I think they kind of fell short on focusing on the tarot whenever they tried to bring in the game aspect more and more. So unfortunately, that's where we stand on this. But overall, a good deck still. Um, compared to the Hobbit tarot, I think I like the Hobbit tarot a little bit more because it doesn't have so much going on around it. But I do love Lord of the Rings, so I can't be uh, too picky with that because I do love Lord of the Rings. So anyway, that's all that I have for this week. Uh, join me next week for another Tarot Talk. And um, yeah, until then, may you have love, hugs, and ladybugs. Bye-bye.